Hello, this is Stuart Fleming. In tonight's video, we're going to continue working with subversion. Tonight, we're going to work again with resolving conflicts. However, this time we're going to use the resolve conflicts GUI that is included with subversion in J Developer. I have two applications open. I have application A and application B, and we're going to download or check out the same application and work on it as though we are two different people. We'll download this one. Hold on. Check out. Person A. I had a file in that directory. And we'll open up the file quickly. And let's go over to person B. We will check out And while this is loading, we'll go back to person A. Okay, here we are. So what we're going to do first is we're going to drag a drop, drag three buttons over. You can see that this is CB1, this one is CB2, and this one is going to be CB3. <clears throat> this one I'm actually going to rename to CBPA. I've been told that you should keep the names of the IDs short because um, Longer names slow down the application when it's uh, being rendered. And we're just going to call this person A, just simply so that we can know um, what the application is doing. And this one we're going to call <coughs> do this. OK. And this one we're just going to name it uh, CB Sane because we're going to keep it the same as the file or on, in both applications. And you'll see what I'm doing in a second. OK, so we've got three buttons all doing the same thing. I'm going to save them. And then we're going to go over to B. One, two, three. And again, this one CB1, we're going to call this person B. This one is going to be, we're going to leave that the same. The other one was do this, we'll do, do that. And of course, we might have different actions too, but we'll keep it simple. One change. And I believe, let me quickly take a look. This one is CB same and the text is same. So let's see how this works. CB same and same capital. So now we've got our changes. And you'll note that they're in the same location and in the same order for the two applications if we switch back and forth. Now, if I save this, I'll now be able to refresh it. There we go. And I have this one over here too. <clears throat> I will update this. And now I'm going to save this one. You'll see now that I actually have an outgoing here and an incoming. And oh, it doesn't allow me. It's out of date. So let's go and see what this does. I cancel that out, and I'm going to go over to the incoming. Click on that, and you can see now I'm going to update. And um, oh dear me, what does this do? <clears throat> OK, so now we've got, first of all, our, our main JSF has some errors in it. And we have mine. Let's take a look at the source here. I think that's going to be easiest. And let's take a look at mine. OK, this is um, what person B did. This is the first, uh, this is actually what we checked out. 
So revision 51. And this is what person A did. So it's very helpful in that it gives you all of the work that you need to work on and you can do what you need to with these files. Um, but you you can look in here and you could probably just fiddle around with the um, application code here at the source level and fix it. However, you'd probably want to be very careful if it was um, data bindings and uh, things that were pulled over from the data control because those affect other files too, such as um, the files over here. I'm not going to show you. Well, I'll show you data bindings, for example, or it might affect these files. So you have to be very, be very careful about what you change here and what effect it might have on other files. Okay, let's take a look at the versioning tool. Um, I'm going to click on here, and there we go. Resolve conflicts. And you can see that we have a window with three set windows in it. And if I double click on that, it will expand to the whole thing and then we can see exactly what we're doing. So we have the person B work over here. And um, it looks like uh, we've got the person A. So this and this are the same. Let, let's click that. Um, you can click on one of these and it will copy it over. Unfortunately, it's a little bit narrow here. There we go. And you can choose which one you're going to change. Um, let's see if we can't move that down so we can see it all. There, that might be better. So if I click here, okay, it changes, it changes here. You see that? So if I click on this, or now I'm going to click on do that, and this will change. Okay, so this was changed to do that. So you can choose which ones you want to keep. Um, person A work or person B work. Okay. And then you can click over here and say save and complete the merge. Okay. Um, not too interested in what's happening actually, but let's double click that. It will go back to normal size. You can see that we actually have this, which is exactly the same as this, and it's still highlighted. Um, and we've got do this and person A, which I believe, I think we actually mixed it, but don't worry about it. This is just a test. And probably the best thing to do is just to remove that, and it looks fine now. If we go to the design, you can see that we have uh, the same do that and person A. And actually, I think this was from person B. <coughs> Excuse me for bringing that up. And you can also see now that the um, files here are all gone. I don't know if they're in the file system or not, but they're gone uh, from the GUI here. So it's a very useful tool, um, but I think it would probably be pretty complex if, for example, two people were <coughs> getting a data control and I'm going to pull over departments view and I'll do a table and I'm just going to do one. I don't want more than I need. We'll do this one. Okay, so we've got that. And um, that's person A. Save. <clears throat> Let's see what we got over here for person B. Um, person B. Okay, I think this is from the updated merge. Okay, and now we're going to drag, I think do a job view. And I just want to see what we, well, I don't want the, I want the whole, and I'm going to do an ADF table, again, with just one field for simplicity's sake. Okay, save it, and um, you can see the outgoing there. I'm going to go over here. I will commit the A side. OK, 
okay see now it's out of out of whack again so we'll cancel that no sorry I need to do incoming and refresh it so here we go and um, looks like it took it just kind of fiddling around here just to see what it's going to do B side and again we're going to have this problem again because we there and again we're going to have the match <clears throat> I did this one time and it was just very very complex you can see that it's basically causing this problem now let's take a look at the data bindings file that hasn't changed actually main page def let's see what's gone on to here well we've got the both iterators here so this is something that we're going to have to clean up too later depending on which one we would choose and I'm not actually going to go into it you saw how it was with the very simple one frankly I actually just prefer working with the XML than the GUI but it is quite possible to use the GUI and I'll just go over to the page and take a look at the resolve complex for it just to see oh, I guess it did it <laughs> interesting let's see what it Came out with no it didn't really merge is complete all right let's just take a quick look again obviously it's not complete because this is a mess <clears throat> and it might be referring to the old one so there we go okay so now you can see that it's taking the entire table value so you would be able to reserve it I think the problem we had was it was still looking at the old change that we had and now we have a newer change so double click this and expand it I'm not going to fix it uh, you can see how complex it is but you could take that or you could say I want this one in which case um, well why not Merge is complete. Double click it to bring it back to size. Close that out. And we've got the job ID. All right. Uh, that is how to use this tool. I hope that was helpful. Have a good day.